Hello, fellow marketers. I'm Brian Bowie, and welcome to another episode of Directive R&D. Today, I'm joined by another guest. We have Brian Glassman, Senior SEO Account Strategist at Directive. Brian, welcome back to the lab. I'm ready to R&D. Let's do it. Super excited to talk about content and SEO. And today's topic particularly is around content briefs and creating you know, a lot of SEOs. One of the biggest pillars is content, and you can't really rank for anything without having content for it. So really excited to dive into a tool we like to use uh, to help us better uh, attack, you know, creating content that ranks organically for your, your target keyword or whatever search intent you're trying to fulfill. So without further ado, I'm gonna allow you to share your screen. And then um, the tool we're gonna talk about today is Content Harmony. Yes. Um, we used to try to create these briefs, these content briefs on our own whenever we're creating a new page or a um, article or a blog. But um, yeah, can you kind of tell me why uh, we use Content Harmony now and uh, who's it for? No worries, yeah, I mean, you know, like you said, you know, when, when creating content, there's a couple of ways to do it. There is, hey, I've, I've got this keyword or group of keywords that I wanna rank for, or I wanna create this piece of pillar content. Um, give that keyword to a writer and say go. Or um, you know, create some sort of template in in Google Docs, and you know, you, you try to hit on some maybe on-page optimization key areas, but really doesn't provide any guidance in terms of like what's already ranking or or how we might position it. So, I think that the benefit in general of, ha of having a brief is that you can position your organization, whether you're on an in-house team working with a writer or a contractor or you're in an agency role is, is to, to really position yourself to produce the best piece of content you can for that particular keyword or phrase. What's that really cool sense. about, yeah, what's really cool about this tool Content Harmony specifically is it kind of takes that a step further and does a lot of the intelligence gathering for you. It's gonna tell you what the keyword intent is so you can orient kind of the nature of that topic around that intent gives you obviously things that you can get in other tools like search volume, uh, average word count. Uh, but another feature, which I'll show off in just a second here, which I think is the most powerful, is it, it scrapes the SERPs for the keyword you're trying to go after and gives you strategic data, uh, headlines from the top 10 SERPs, what they're writing about, how long each piece is. So you're not only writing a piece that is optimized for a keyword, right? Mm -hmm. And a lot of folks just stop there, but one that's positioned to actually belong in the top 10 and compete with what's already there. That makes a lot of sense. And I think we see it on the screen here, trying to figure out all of this yourself would take a lot of time, right? And using a tool like this has a non-biased approach to gathering this type of research from search volume, average word count from everything ranking on the first page. Right. The difficulty, um, the date or well, that's that's today. Uh, but at least, you know, um, I've been there where I audit, you know, uh, you try to copy every piece that's ranking and uh, figure out what's working. And this kind of tells you that already. Right. Yeah, exactly. Right. So I think it just it does a lot of the legwork for you and it gives you information that you may not otherwise have or things that you'd assume in a typical situation. Like I know. I've worked with a lot of a lot of brands that just don't have rules or maybe are too stringent with their word count. Like every piece has got to be at least 400 words. Why? Just because, right? Yeah. It's got to be a thousand words. Why? Just because. Well, you know, if we're looking at these keywords and, and looking at the top one here, it looks like we, we synced with your search history on Google somehow. Wow. <laughs> Yeah. Um, Transactional intent. Yeah. I know. Right. It's going to find you some, some lab coat blazers. Yeah. Um, but like if, if I were, you know, on an in-house team and I was part of that, Hey, a thousand keywords is like what we always do. Well, we realized very quickly using this tool that that's not really going to be competitive in terms of what's already working, mm -hmm. what's already ranking in the top 10. So that alone is, is just a good piece of content, but I'd uh, love to take you through maybe an example so you can see some of the other features and how this tool really helps take the work out of building a brief, which which is why we love it, because we yeah. less work, more value, that's the magic formula. Well, love it. Seems like it's pretty easy to use so far, so let's dive in and uh, give the viewers a live example. Why not, right? That's why we're here. 
Right. Um, so, I mean, all I've done to get to this point is I've created a new project in Content Harmony. I added directive. I added our website URL. And the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to run keyword reports, right? So each piece of content is centered around a target keyword or phrase. So that's that's what I've done here leading up to this. So let's go with you know content pruning as an example, which is, is an, another important content strategy um, that maybe we can go into on a future R&D. <laughs> yeah, I'm already like, what is that? And uh, I see that it, it works well with, well, I'll see what people are looking for right now when uh, looking at this keyword, so. Yeah. Yeah, so generally speaking, for those that aren't aware, the idea of content pruning is going back and, and evaluating uh, existing content for things like relevance, redundancy, you know, popularity, is it ranking, is it not getting traffic, uh, and then using that as a basis to make it better or reduce the number of posts in favor of maybe some more powerful pieces. So that's kind of the, the general idea. And the person who would be searching for this would be maybe a, a marketing specialist or a content specialist uh, on yeah. a team, you know, uh, fairly specialized keyword, right? So let's go into this. And the first thing we'll see once we click in from that keyword report is a few things, some of which appeared on the prior screen, but mm -hmm. about 90 people, 90 individuals per month on average search for this keyword content pruning on Google. Primary research intent, that tells us right away that we're going to have to do our best to provide as much information as possible around what is, how to, uh, who is it for, why is it good, and, and how to proceed with content pruning. Uh, pretty long piece, right? So yeah. we shoot for at least 2,313 words to, to really be competitive. Um, pausing there, would you say like there's wiggle room there or – just based on the data, it's probably better to shoot for that amount or even more with the content. So length is not as, you know, by itself, like the thing that's going to get you there, right? It, right. it can be shorter. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. I think in some cases it's going to be difficult to find so much to say on a certain topic. I think for this particular topic, what I want, especially uh, with, with a, average word count of 2300 and, and some fairly robust content on the topic is is to create some sort of guide right some sort of all-in content strategy content pruning guide and, and i think that by positioning this positioning this is like a really comprehensive piece um even if it didn't get up to 2300 if it was maybe 2000 i would say mm -hmm. that that's an acceptable target as well but yeah should, and all of these are like directional, right? It's still like pairing the data science behind this and uh, the creativity you have as a writer to fulfill that intent with whatever you can produce that helps out this exactly. person searching for this. So these are really good guidelines for you. Let's jump to the, yeah, what, um, what else in terms of guidelines uh, does this produce? Yeah, yeah. And, and really just to, just to back up to that a second, like the goal is to create as good or better piece of content on content pruning that's currently ranking, right? So whether yeah. you do that in 2,000 words or 5,000 words or 1,500 words, uh, it, it should be competitive. So the first tab here, there's a series of tabs, right? So within this keyword report screen, there's a series of tabs that's going to give us all the information we need to piece together this content brief. Uh, what's really cool about this is that um, as we go through this process and click certain things, what it's doing is it's building the brief for us. So when we get to that final stage, everything that we've clicked and selected and put together up to that point uh, will be compiled into a single content brief. So it's, it's not just informational screens that you then have to do something with. Mm -hmm. uh, you'll be building it as we go, and I'll show you that now. Cool. Intent just gives you an idea, right, of, of what that's looking at in terms of, you know, seasonality, what kind of search results is Google displaying? This is kind of, this is the data gathering tab. Yeah. But as you move into, uh, let's say, the topic analysis, uh, it gets, it becomes a little more actionable, right? Mm. So we'll start to see, and again, this is based on this tool's crawl of page one of the SERPs, like what other keywords you know, LSI keywords, related keywords, are competitors using? How frequently are they being used? So this is where I might go in and say, okay, well, we've got an exact match. Um, sure, we might want to talk about search engines. We might want to talk about old content. Yeah. Um, 
blog posts? You know, do we want to provide a good user experience? Do we want to eliminate low quality content? Yeah. What are the best practices? How are we evaluating for thin content, et cetera? Yeah, I love that that gives you the, the amount and on the right side, the percentages too. Yeah, exactly. Right. Um, and then we'll maybe do some related searches. Um, again, this is all just like related keywords or it starts to give, get you a, give you a sense of like how to structure the piece. Right. Right. You know, I might deleting old content, duplicate okay. content. Right. Mm -hmm. So you'll notice, and, and that's, you know, you'll, you'll see as I click these, they, they are highlighted blue and they're starting to kind of collect these ideas. Now, this outline tab will start to give us an idea and, and it crawls the content of each search result. So these, these wow. are the, these are the top 10 SERPs and it's actually giving us like a structured outline. So if you're looking for ideas, right, where normally I might say, Hey, writer, here's our keyword. Like you're good at what you do, do the thing. <laughs> right. uh, we can give them some more direction that kind of can, can help them get moving. Right. So, as I said earlier, this is a research piece. Um, there are a lot of, of really strong like content king app, right? Um, cognitive SEO, search engine journal, like these are really authoritative sources. So let's make sure that we're also one of those. Yep. What is, why should you care? Uh, how often? I love that you can just click into ones that you think would tell a good story based on if you were the SEO giving the content out, yeah, I love that you can. Exactly. And that's the process I'm going through. I'm like, okay, well, am I hitting on all the, like the featured snippet people also ask the what is, the how often, the how to kind of things, but also making sure that as you go through this, you're starting to structure an outline for your writer. And clarification, the one that you're looking at right now, that one ranks number one right now, right? Correct. Got yeah. It. Yeah. They're in sequential order. Cool. Um, so I might kind of scan these, you know, we've got some what is, why, um, identify low ranking pages, identify underperforming pages. Um, Sweet. Yeah, right, so I might go through this and let's just assume I've clicked all the ones that I wanna click. Yeah. Um, the next one is, is I've alluded to is, you know, Google's knowledge graph, right? How do we, identify questions that folks are asking or different um, search result displays that Google is, is putting forth, whether it's people also ask, as you can see here, um, answering questions that show up on Quora, which is another featured snippet source for Google. Um, you know, should you delete old content, right? Addressing anxieties around deleting content when it actually could be beneficial uh, or inversely optimizing them to make them more impactful. Mm -hmm. Uh, so these are questions that I think, you know, in the instructions that I give, I say can be answered implicitly or explicitly, right? Um, you know, by answer by having a question and answer pair, you know, with a structured heading and a quick, concise answer, or some sort of bullet point, uh, and any associated schema that that might help. Um, that can help us get to that featured snippet result. Um, that said, there's inherent value in just answering these questions. That makes sense, right? Yeah. So I might scan these and even, I mean, look at the sources here, right? Yeah. Google people also ask, so user generated questions, Quora, Stack Exchange, Reddit, like there's a, a lot of really good sources of information. So you know what people care about before mm -hmm. going to the brief. Yeah, love that. It saves you so much time and just pulls it all together here. Right, and it eliminates people making too many assumptions, right? Right. Um, authoritative sources, right? So we get into external links and internal links. I know a lot of best practices around that. You want to have, you know, a handful of uh, third-party authoritative links going out to new tabs to, to, to provide additional information to readers, but also you want to create that web of internally linked content so you can kind of give Google and its crawlers a better sense of, of what you're trying to do and, and how you're trying to help answer those queries. So and uh, as a rule of thumb, is there any like suggestions based on the piece you have, like how many internal links you should have um, pointing within your website? I don't have rules of thumb for that. Uh, <laughs> you don't want to have too many links on a page, generally speaking. Yeah. Uh, I think, you know, with, with a standard 
one to 2000 page post, I would say, you know, one or two external links that open in a new tab. So you're not navigating the user off the page uh, that enhance what you're trying to talk about, right? Mm -hmm. Purpose, I think, is something that comes first and then technicality, right? Yeah. Uh, and if then I would say three or four uh, internal links with relevant and varied anchor text for each uh, would be generally where I'd start. At least, right, yeah. Right, so mm -hmm. what do you think, Dr. Boy? Yeah, when I did a lot of content for Institute, check it out. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, uh, for every piece that I did, uh, it was around 1,500 to 2,000 words. And uh, we had a very unique internal linking strategy pointing to every singular lesson page. Mm. So yeah, I, I aim for around five to 10 unique links and never try to have a duplicate link and, and vary the anchor text language used mm. uh, pointing to those different pages. So yeah, five to 10 unique links, not forcing it, but making sure that if you're reading through it, it just adds value to the user where that page is definitely going to talk about whatever you're pointing or whatever your anchor text has in there. Like if it's how to do content pruning and you're going to link to this piece, that's right. a good, good, uh, good internal link there. Well, let's put that to practice, shall we? Let's do it. So, yeah, so overlapping links, right? So these are going to tell us that, hey, these sites, uh, this many sites, right, this, this many competitors who are attempting to rank for, for this are also ranking to these sites. So I might uh, want to link to Search Console. I might want to link to another Google resource. Uh, SEM Rush, you know, is, is another authoritative piece. So let's just say I pick these three or four, right, uh, mm -hmm. for authoritative external links. Um, this is a really, really cool feature, and it's only pulling one right now for this because I, I don't think to date we've had a lot of content pruning-oriented content, which will change after this R&D. Yeah. Uh, but it will automatically surface. Content Harmony will automatically surface internal link targets based on what it deems relevant. So, you know, I'll, I'll do these content briefs for clients all the time, and, and almost always there's, you know, four to eight relevant links that – you could click on just like I did here. And as we get to the brief, which again, we'll show you at the, the end of this, um, it'll pull these for you. Uh, so you can provide those internal link targets. So you can provide those external link targets for the writer. That's awesome. Yeah, cool. I don't have to be searching on my own, right? Cool, yeah. So it seems like if we scroll back up to the top, um, these are awesome too, yep. to use yep. as links. I'm very curious about, um, yeah, so these other tabs show you competitors, images, and videos, um, and this is all within the keyword report. Is the next step to like actually pr produce the the brief and it's exportable? Yes, except uh, in this case, you don't have to produce the brief because we've already done that. Uh, Ooh, okay. Is, so the purpose of clicking on all those things, uh, in addition to them looking very pretty and, and being highlighted, mm -hmm. uh, it's going to pull them in here. So. Navigating yep. over to the content brief, I mean, this is what it looks like. And, and there are a couple of text area boxes where you can say, look, all right, so this is what the title tag should be, writer. Um, this is what our social media titles, meta title should be. Um, this is maybe a little more context on what this piece should be about or some things that you should be thinking of. So a bit of a, a creative brief here. But you'll notice that underneath each section, here are the, the headings I've highlighted, right? Mm. I can add my own custom brief here, but you'll notice here are the keywords and related terms I highlighted. That's awesome. Key questions. I, again, I can add my own color here, but those are the questions I've highlighted. Um, we can say, hey, here are some additional resources. Here are some additional links. Here's the audience information, right? So if, if wow. we have... Mm -hmm. Yeah, if we had a persona deck or you know something like that that we could just link to, uh, we could identify that persona, in-house marketing specialist, and link to the associated um, presentation for that. You know, do we have any unique points of view? Uh, what's our meta description? Here's the recommended word count here. So we might say, all right, well, let's do two thousand plus. Yeah. So, you know, we can, we can identify all of these details. We can add as much context or as little context as we want. I mean, you really could just stop with some of the auto-selected things here. Uh, and then you can share it. Cool. 
So from here, you can share in read-only or greater mode. You can send this over to your writer, and they will be incredibly impressed at how much detailed research that you did. Unbeknownst to them, you made a robot do all the work. <laughs> but it's still adding some of your own, uh, you know, consulting and uh, strategy and totally. all of that. So that I love that that you can do both at the same time. Exactly. Um, and I guess in today's day and age, SEO has become almost a household name. Like a lot of people know about it. Uh, it's mentioned on mainstream TV, like Shark, uh, Shark Tank and stuff like that. So um, everyone knows about it. And you need a competitive advantage to rank for things um, exactly. in the terms you want to go after. So, yeah, I think all of that are, are super useful things. And we've seen it to work time and time again to, to use the data, use your own consulting and best practice, knowing that audience and then creating content that really fulfills that search intent. Um, yep. I did notice that there is one tab you had on content grader. We don't have to dive into it now, but after you produce the content using all that data, you can pump your content in and it'll kind of like look at everything and evaluate if it thinks that it's going to rank for that term, right? You can, and there are similar tools and, and other uh, apps and things, but essentially, yeah, you can, you can take the content once it's been produced and you can add it into that content grader to do that further level of analysis uh, on that, which is, which is really fun to do. Awesome. This was a little bit of a longer one today. So if you sticked around till this point, thank you so much. And hopefully, you know, this, <laughs> yeah, round of applause for you. <laughs> but hopefully this, uh, if you're looking to create content for SEO and really take it to the next step and making sure that you have um, all the tools you need to and all the data you have and research done to give yourself the best shot at ranking, yep. um, check out Content Harmony. Um, Brian, thanks so much for joining in and thanks to the viewers out there. Um, Thank as you. always, leave a comment if you have any uh, questions and uh, yeah, we'll see you in the next lab. Adios. Adios.